Hi, I'm the Lockpicking Cuber, and in this video I'm going to have a look at this uh, Hanayama cast padlock puzzle. It's a 5 out of 6, and given that it's Hanayama, it's therefore going to be pretty difficult. Um, I've, I've seen and solved a few other Hanayama puzzles, but I've never seen uh, this one, so I don't really know anything about how it works. It says it's an assembly and disassembly puzzle, so you have to disassemble it and then put it back together again. Looks like a regular puzzle, just pick it up and you'll quickly realise the challenge ahead, it will not open easily. The inside is made of two elliptical pieces, tightly locked around circular pieces, and is very difficult to release. Don't give up, try to take them apart and put them back together several times. Alright, well this is exciting, so... Uh, let's see... What we have in here... So we have... Uh, I don't know, oh yeah, a little marketing catalog about Hanayama puzzles. It's nice. We get a Crux sticker and a Crux card. That's where I got it from, cruxpuzzles.co.uk. Um, this is a piece of uh, instructions, I guess, which just says the same as on the back, except it also says the theme is obstinacy. <laughs> I like that idea. Oh, it's tiny. Wow. That's interesting. I, I Somehow from the picture on the front of the box, I got the impression of it being a lot bigger. Like uh, the size of a normal padlock, I guess. Okay, so let's see what we've got here. So we've got a metal, solid metal puzzle shaped a bit like a padlock. We've got these two kind of shackle shaped pieces. Uh, that go in kind of opposite directions to each other. And then two semicircular pieces on the front and two semicircular pieces on the back that make up the kind of body of the uh, of the padlock. Um, it's, as always, with Hanayama puzzles, it's beautifully made, very solid and heavy feeling. Pieces feel really nice. Um, yeah, okay, so we'll have a spoiler break, and then after the spoiler break I will see if I can solve it. All right, so let's have a look. So, I mean, I guess my, my first thought is the idea is that you want to slide these pieces out through these two gaps. Um, and if you line the gaps up to each other, uh, I see. So it would be easy if I could just now, having lined the gaps up, then just turn these pieces so that they uh, somehow lined up with the gap so that they could slide out. But the act of turning these pieces uh, can make some movements here. Okay. I see the gap isn't big enough actually. Or is it going? Yeah, obstinacy. <laughs> obstinacy makes some sense here. I feel like if I'm going to interpret that uh, fairly literally, then it's going to make me think, you know, go with your instinct and just keep going. <laughs> Don't give up. it's got to involve pulling these apart this way first and then something can slide out. That's my gut feeling. Right, so the gaps are lined up here. But that doesn't help me over here, because then I'm just pushing metal against metal. We have another gap here, though. Yeah, 
been going for about 15 minutes now. I feel like I understand the pieces reasonably well. But other than that, I don't think I've made any progress yet. Not really. If we line them up so they're opposite each other like this, they can't move through each other. Oh, 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 look at that. Right, I need to figure out what I'm doing here so that I don't get it done in the way that I can't get it back again. I think this is going to be the disassembly mechanism then. So I had these kind of opposite each other. Okay. Well, that's nice. And then <laughs> what happens next? This is presumably nearly there. Okay, I'm back. Um, my uh, phone battery ran out, I'm afraid. And um, while I was charging it, I, I tried not to really pay any attention to it, but I did notice one thing which has led me to thinking. So I realized, having looked at my um, original drawing that when we first had the uh, padlock the shackle was open up here and now the openings in the shackle are down here inside the body and you, it's not just something you can change by turning it around so I've done some sort of swapping movement and um, one thing that's occurred to me is I wonder if I can get it so that one of them is down here and one of them is up here I'm not really sure why that will make a difference but it feels like some sort of asymmetry like that is going to be helpful somehow. So let's see. It's it, and and of course the um, the pattern I was using of having this line up was correct when the gap in the shackle was up here, but not when it's down here. So I have to do it differently, I think. But I haven't quite worked out exactly yet what to do. Um, So what I want to do is get it back into that figure of eight state and then see if I can get get it back to being a padlock, but where one of them, one of the pieces of shackle has its hole in the top and one of them has its piece of, uh, has its hole lined up with the, the circle, the body of the padlock. And then I feel like that might allow a sort of, I don't know, an escape path or something. <laughs> Right, so we've got it into the figure of eight. Um, now the question is, what is going to allow me to switch this round if I... Oh, I see. Okay, so this thing determines whether you get a closed shackle or an open shackle. Right, so here we get a closed shackle because this piece is allowed to move by being above that. If I push it down the other way and then connect the other way, I'll get an open shackle. Anyway, I want a closed shackle this time, so let's do that. Okay, at least I think I understand that bit now. That's the open shackle version. Um, 
Oh, there we go. Yeah, there's the closure. Closure. Okay, so now I'm realising that I've never really properly explored this state because I originally assumed it was the same as the starting state, but it wasn't. Although clearly very similar. Oh, what's this? Is this new? lined up now. Can this piece not just come through? He really doesn't want to. Do I just have to use some brute force? No, no, it's not quite right, is it? Maybe So I've now done what I wanted to do right at the beginning, which is line up these holes. Question being, what can I do with that? Oh, come on, this is definitely a new state. Oh! Now this is really a new state. This having come through that hole like that. Halfway through the gap now. Okay, so it definitely fits, well, halfway. <laughs> I think that means it should fit all the way, but now we need this to be rotated. Okay, I went and had dinner there, and I am now back. I, I just left it in this state that I got it to, and I'll uh, keep seeing what I can do with it. the same thing but the mirror version Ugh. <laughs> well that's tedious a because I don't know how to do it and B because it's gonna be really hard to recognize it um, how do I recognize it okay okay so the point is that the one that has the the bolt the nub here is the one where the shackle hole is outside of the padlock. And the one that doesn't have it, which is just uh, in there, there is no such, uh, no such nub. You can see there's nothing in there. So I wanna get it so that that little nub is on the, is on the inside. Yeah, on the inside. Just write that down. Nub wants to be inside padlock body. I don't know, this might not be right, but <coughs> it feels promising somehow. Okay, so let's see if I can just change the state of this then. How did I do this? I think it's, again it's to do with this kind of Z direction. Okay, so when I put it back together, 
this one, this one here is the one that needs to be inside this hole here needs to be inside the lock body it's oh, going the wrong way still, but it's the hole that matters, not the nub. And that hole needs to be there. Okay, now it's in the right place. Right? Yeah. That's the hole with the nub inside the log body. So let's just check. I think I think I have tested this, but yeah. It still doesn't come out. Uh, unless it's this uh, direction thing again. No, I can't remember what I did. Okay, phew, I got it apart. Now that took a long time, but I have a s sort of an idea of how I did it. So let's take a look at these pieces. Are these identical? I think they are. Yeah, they do look identical. These, on the other hand, are not quite identical because so this nub I keep talking about, which you don't have on there. All right, wow, that was fun. So now... I have to try and get it back together again. <laughs> oh no, that's way off track, isn't it? Like that. There we go. Yeah, this is it. This is it. Okay. Whew. So I've solved it once. <laughs> Does that count? <coughs> Not really. Eventually I need to solve it uh, multiple times. Ah, and actually this isn't even back to its start state, right? Because now I've got it in the good state. The state that's solvable from. So let's just check that I can solve it from the good solvable state. If nothing else. There, yeah, okay, okay, okay. So actually, once I've got it to this state, I know what to do. Uh, there. There? No. Hang on. Oh, I thought I knew. Okay. It's uh, the next day now, and I've solved it forwards and backwards maybe 10 or 12 times. I still don't feel like I entirely get every step, but I, I, I think I understand it quite a bit better. So there's um, five main states, and then there's a bunch of states in between those. So the first state is this one, where we have both shackles open. Uh, so the holes in the shackles are exposed outside of the body of the lock. The next thing we have to do is get to the state where both shackles are closed. Okay, so... <coughs> Um, 
that is oops usually very easy till I come to show it at which point I suddenly can't do it of course I kind of let gravity there we go I kind of let gravity do it because you want to have a different it's, a, it's to do with whether this piece here is against this shackle or this piece is against this shackle. So anyway, now we've got the two, this is state number two, where the two um, shackles are both closed. Okay, now what we have to do is get it into the state where one shackle is open and one shackle is closed. And this is the move I find the hardest. This is the one where I don't really know what to do. Um, I suddenly see it when it when it's coming. I see it, and then and then it's kind of a a mystery again. But it's something like this. So we line these up like this, and that lets us do uh, this. We get into this sort of intermediate step state, and then we push that around and down. There we go. Okay, so now we're in the state where we have one shackle open and one shackle closed. But now we have to switch it around so that it's this one that's open and this one that's closed. Otherwise it doesn't work. Um, and the way to do that is exactly the same as the movement that I did to get it from both open to both closed. So I think this is right. No. No, this is not right. So what I, what I wrote down on my piece of paper yesterday about this step was... The nub wants to be inside the padlock body. That wasn't quite right. The way it works is you want the um, you want the shackle piece that has a nub on it. So that's um, that's this one here. You want this one to be closed, and you want the other one to be open. Okay, that's this step here. So so if I just do this, oh, there we go. Okay, now we're into the fourth state, yeah. And then actually this is, I think, kind of the easiest one now, is the fifth step is just opening it up. So what we do is we just line these up There we go, and they come apart. Whew, okay, so that's how we get it apart. And then actually putting it back together again is is not super difficult. Um, we the, the, the hardest bit in a way is just this first step. So what we do is we line this guy up here like that. Um, now we put the other one in the other way, so... Um, <coughs> To line the keyhole up with the word padlock in here. Is this right? I think so. And then we just slide these two guys together. Like, whoops, hang on. Now it's a bit fiddly this bit. Now we're into state four again, where, and now from here I need to now switch it so that this one's closed and this one's open. So, oops, <laughs> I'm actually doing the wrong move there. I'm completely opening it up again. This is not what I want. Okay. So from this state, we do the move to get it like this. Then we turn it over and put it back. Now, have I got it right? Yeah. Okay. Now we're in the third state. So now I need to get it back to the second state where both shackles are closed. And again, this is the one that I find the hardest. Um, but I think, yeah, I think this is right. No, nope, not quite. There. There we go. So both shackles are now closed. And now we just have to do the final step to get back to the first state where both shackles are open. Uh, which is this one. Yay, there we go. So, whew, that's it. I mean... How long did I spend on that in total? It would have been, I don't know, something like three and a half hours um, to get to the state where I could do that in, what was that, a three or four minutes? 
Um, it's it's a tricky puzzle. It's so nice. I love fiddling with it. It's uh, it's basically a fidget toy now. I can just sit there fiddling with it without actually trying to solve it. And every now and then it accidentally gets into a new state and that's fine. Um, but even without trying to solve it, it's just a nice solid um, fidget toy to fiddle with. Um, really good fun. But if you um, know somebody who's into puzzles and is uh, patient <laughs> and has enough obstinacy, um, then I definitely recommend this. I'd say it's by far the hardest lock puzzle I've ever solved. And um, because of that, it's the most rewarding, most satisfying lock puzzle um, that I've seen as well. So yeah, I, I, I recommend it as a gift for your uh, puzzle-loving friends or relatives or loved ones. There we go. So um, thank you for watching this video. I, uh, I've recorded about, I don't know, three hours of footage. And so hopefully you ended up only having to watch a few minutes of it. Um, and uh, even so, thank you for sitting through that. I uh, hope you've enjoyed the video. Please uh, click on, um, you know, like down here or, or subscribe down there if you want to see more videos like this. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks for watching and bye. See you on the next video.